Okay. Let me um, first introduce my wife, Jane. Say hello. Uh, and let me thank Mimi not only for hosting uh, this event today, and boy, what a turnout, <laughs> uh, but for the years and years of work she has put into progressive politics. Mimi, thank you very much. Um, yesterday morning at 9.30, we held a rally in Las Vegas, and we had close to a thousand people coming out. Yeah. Tonight, we will be in Denver, and I don't know how many folks are coming out, but we have some 7,000 RSVPs. And I hope if those numbers come out, we know how to accommodate them. That's a lot of people. <laughs> Which would be the largest turnout for any campaign event for any candidate this election cycle. Yeah. So I think what is going on is this campaign is catching fire uh, for a simple reason. And the simple reason is we are telling the truth. And I think that that is what the American people want to hear. And, and the truth may not be necessarily pleasant, but we can't go forward unless we have the courage to take a hard look at where we are today. And where we are today is not in a good place. Uh, as many of you know, we are looking at grotesque and immoral, and I use that word often, levels of income and wealth inequality. And we got to bring that out on the table because it impacts every other aspect of our lives. Nobody can tell me that a situation in which one-tenth, one-tenth of one percent now own 22 percent of the wealth in America, which is almost as much as the bottom 90 percent own. Does anyone think that that comes anywhere close to being where the United States of America should be? And no one can tell me that in an economy today in which 99 percent of all new income goes to the top 1 percent is anything like the economy we want to see. And the reality, the questions that we have to ask ourselves, pretty simple questions. All of you know that in recent years, there has been an explosion in technology and worker productivity, right? Every worker today is producing more than he or she did years ago. How does it happen then that people are working longer hours for lower wages? Who made those decisions that we give people the tools to produce more and yet they earn less? And one of the points that I've been making, one of the fun things about running for president is you can raise issues that no one else has talked about. That's a lot of fun to do. So it's like what happens when people's incomes go down, and median family income in America has gone down by about $5,000 since 1999, what happens is that people are forced to work longer and longer hours. All of you remember, remember when we were in school, we read these textbooks, and there were pictures in the textbooks of workers out on the streets demonstrating in early 1900s. What were they demonstrating for? Remember? They were demonstrating for a 40-hour work, eight-hour day. And what the unions were saying is they say, how are people are human beings? They're not beasts of burden. They want time off for leisure. They want time off to spend with their family. They want to get more education. That was 100 years ago. And today, here are the facts. 85% of working men are working longer than 40 hours a week. 65% of working women are working longer than 40 hours a week. And our people today work more hours than do the people in any other industrialized nation. Japanese work very, very hard. We work a lot more hours than they do. And let me tell you what the result is, because I go all over the country. We have an exhausted people. Our people are tired. 
they're stressed out. I will never forget in Burlington, Vermont, uh, going to a grocery store, and I came out, and there was a woman there. I said, you know, Bernie, I just want to mention something to you. Uh, my husband and I have one kid, and we would like to have another kid. But we don't think we can be the parents that we want to be because he's working three jobs, and I'm working three jobs. And if you think that that is uncommon, it is not. In my state and all over this country, people are working two, three jobs to cobble together an income. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is, yes, we could understand that if we were a poor country. You know, if we were a Haiti, if we were a poor country, people were struggling, working incredible hours. We are the richest country in the history of the world. And yet, nobody knows that because almost all of the wealth and all of the income is going to a handful of people. And that has got to change. <laughs>